Hey there, Earthlings. Thanks for tuning in to the Barardo Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Barardo, where we talk about health, happiness, and anything else that's important to us humans. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the podcast by visiting thebarardo.com or just click the little subscribe button wherever you listen to the podcast. And be sure to check out my Instagram at thebarardo for all the latest videos and content. Thanks so much and enjoy the episode. It's just, just funny. It's, it's just funny. Yeah, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how. What's up there, folks? Hello and happy day to all of you. Your shit's getting wild out there, man. Hope you guys are doing okay. I know things are uh, seems a little bit bleak and seems like we're uh, we're we're going back into the uh, you know <laughs> the area where we didn't see each other, or touch each other, or, um, you know, get to talk to each other face to face. I know it's a little bleak. I know it's a little crazy, but you know, talk a little bit more about that. But more importantly, how do we work through this? You know, how do we stay positive? That's what the podcast is really going to be about. But, you know, before we get into that, I do want to thank our friends over at Rainforest Bowls. Speaking of some good folks, uh, these these folks are great. I mean, over at Rainforest Bowls, you can get all types of really cool products literally made um, from the rainforest. Uh, in Vietnam, they use these incredible tools and uh, all these great people over there that uh, they'll create bowls, plates, utensils out of wood cutoffs and coconut shells. Most companies, if you're not familiar, when they cut down these trees that actually have coconuts in them, sometimes they'll grab the coconuts and, you know, they make coconut juice, they'll feed it to the village, etc. But more often than not, they'll throw away or burn all those coconut shells and wood cutoffs. What Rainforest Bulls does is they actually take uh, that unused wood cutoffs and, and coconut shells and they'll create these really cool utensils. So it's just overall um, great for the environment because they're not obviously burning any of this stuff but they're using it instead of wasting it. What I love most about it though, is every single time you purchase one of their products, it goes to good cause. One coconut tree is planted. That produces 75 coconuts, which in turn can make 150 coconut bowls. So for every 150 bowls that are created, 15 tree seedlings get planted, which of course will create more coconut trees. So overall, just great for the environment and uh, really cool if you want to give your kitchen a little makeover. Visit reinforcedbowls.com. Use the code THEBARDO. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. Check them out. I do want to thank my friends over at Superfat. Superfat Superfat.com. Everything you need. If you guys need a snack, uh, put down the chips, man. Why are you eating that trail mix? Don't eat that bullshit. It's full of sugar and artificial ingredients that is not going to get you what you need. If you're looking to be keto, paleo, uh, or even if you know you're following a vegan lifestyle, whatever lifestyle it is, Superfat has some great snacks. Not all their stuff is vegan, but they do have a lot of great healthy uh, alternatives for those guilty pleasures that you like. Like they have uh, keto cookie bites, which are actually uh, good for you, uh, as opposed to having like you know Oreos or chocolate chips. Listen, I know they're good. I get it. I love Oreos too. Who doesn't? But Superfat has some great alternatives. That'll give you that sweet tooth craving and kind of wing you off that artificial bullshit. Uh, you can visit, visit superfat.com, use the code BARARDO10. You're going to get 10% off your entire order. So you can try out everything. Superfat.com. Thanks, guys. Let's get into today's episode. I know it's funky out there. I get it. You know, it's uh, this new Delta variant. It's a little wicked, man. Right? Um. Uh, Listen, man, I got the vax. I got the, you know, I got the derma. I'm with you. Um, you know, but people are still getting it, right? And I don't know. Of course, there's, here's the problem, which is what we're going to talk about a lot. You know, where do, what do we do? Who do we believe? Because there's so much shit out there and it's okay to be a little skeptical, I guess. But we got to be careful. Because some of us are at the point to where now we're being so skeptical that we're even like, you know, saying, hey, what was the point of the vaccine? Listen, this virus is real. It's a real thing. Now, during the election uh, last year, was it blown out of proportion? Maybe. Are there some news sources that, you know, use the headlines for their benefit? Sure, maybe. But 
you know, they're a business, man. You got to understand that they have, they have, uh, stockholders. They have, they got to make money. They got payroll, right? So these people are going to fabricate the truth a little bit. I mean, every company is like that. It's just, that's what's going to happen. They're going to blow it up because they want to make as much money as they can. And by you, you know, clicking a headline or something, uh, you know, that's going to, that's going to help them out. It's going to get them ratings and views. So take that into account, number one, which is why I don't like to consume a lot of that bullshit. And by, you know, bullshit, I mean like none of it, like no CNN, no Fox. I don't waste time with any of that stuff because I don't know who to believe. And it's kind of hard to distinguish what's real and what isn't, right? So uh, you have to be careful of that. So that's one thing is when you're consuming that type of content, the more you spread it, and you don't know if it's correct information. This is how this type of crap starts where people say, well, what was the point of the vaccine? Listen, the point of the vaccine was to try to beat this virus. But unfortunately, it's became, you know, become more and more aggressive. And now this new Delta variant is, is kind of taken over. And, you know, we're seeing people with symptoms and we're, they're able to carry the virus even if they're vaccinated. So, I mean, yeah, as, as of today, according... Um, you know, to Google, <laughs> who the hell knows uh, if, if this is accurate. But, uh, you know, this is just based off of, uh, it looks like worldmeters.info. It appears as of, you know, what is this, August, I don't know, 6th or something, whatever the Saturday is. Uh, but it looks like in the United States, the coronavirus cases uh, are over 36 million total cases of coronavirus, not the Delta, uh, not the Delta variant, but just overall cases. Deaths are 632,000 and change, um, and recovered is 29 million. So, I mean, if you look at the total, the total amount of cases versus deaths and recovered, I mean, 2% of people, so 2% of people that get it die, 98% recover. Listen, man, I don't care who you are. I mean, that's a lot of people. Over half a million people died from this. That's a lot. Again, I mean, you could say what you want, but this is a thing. No doubt, it's a real thing. Now, the reason people are skeptical, I think, is because there's a lot to be skeptical about, right? Like there's, um, again, there's news sources that we don't trust. There's uh, shit on YouTube, shit all over the internet. You don't know what's true and what's not. But I think this is where we have to get a little bit more educated and we have to be on the safe side. You know, it's propaganda can go both ways, right? It's funny, like, no one knows it's propaganda if it's what you believe. You know, let's just say we'll, we'll throw in politics. So if you're a Republican and there's Republican propaganda like bullshit going out, you as a Republican, you're like, what the fuck? They're picking on Republicans. This is bullshit. But you as a Democrat, you're not thinking that. You're like, yes, that's correct. That is totally true about those Republicans. You know, same thing with the other way, right? <laughs> you never kind of look at it from both sides. And I think you kind of have to look at it from both sides when it comes to something like this. So if you don't know where it's coming from and going to, then none of us really know anything, including the CDC. I think they're all just trying to figure this thing out. And you have to be patient. And you can't bust balls too much. And we have to be nice to each other about this type of stuff as they're figuring this stuff out. You know, but us accusing, listen, you could say what you want about Fauci, but the dude's been in the industry for, for quite some time. He, he might have made and said a lot of stupid stuff, but the, the guy's a human. I mean, he's going to make mistakes and he's going to try to do anything he can to go back on those mistakes and, you know, cover his tracks and lie a little bit. Is he doing it because he wants to be like the leader of the world? No, he's just, he's a human and he made mistakes and he said some stupid stuff. We all do. I mean, again, we're all trying to figure this thing out. This is not a normal thing. If this is the regular flu, I don't think anybody would be having these conversations. But because this is a new virus and a new variant, I think we just got to be careful. And we got to just relax and take our time and let this thing figure it out. We're all wanting to get back to normal, right? And of course, I want to get back to normal too. I think we all do. I mean, God damn, it's been so long, but you know, we're humans. We evolve, we can adapt. We have to figure this thing out. And hundreds of years ago, 
we were riding around in carriages and horses. When we said horsepower, it was actually two horses, two horsepower. Now we drive around in, in, in Teslas that go zero to 60 in three seconds. So we evolve, we change. When cars came out, every time they would get T-boned and in a car accident, people were flying out. There was no seatbelts. So they're like, wait a minute, we should probably install some seatbelts in here. So people quit flying out and dying when they get in a wreck. Now it's a requirement. So we evolve. And I know it sucks, but with technology advancing constantly, you know, everything changing so much, listen, maybe this is the new way. Maybe it's a lot of virtual stuff. Maybe we're not, you know, going to talk to people anymore. You know, maybe there's going to be 10 more viruses like this that are going to be even worse, killing more and more people. I mean, if you don't think a virus could do something like that, look at the Spanish flu. They didn't have the technology uh, for vaccines or to protect themselves. But there might, something might come along where we don't have that technology to protect ourselves. So maybe this is, you know, the way the world is going to evolve to. You know, the Spanish flu wiped out millions of people. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's said to believe that, you know, before Spanish invaders uh, conquered South America, uh, they found groups of nomadic people, like, clustered all around the Amazon River. And, you know, it turns out now, you know, you could look this up. I think National Geographic put something out. But you could look this up, and, you know, those archaeologists are taking a look at it, and there's, like, these massive civilizations that, you know, millions of people lived there at one point. And we didn't even know until, you know, now we're starting to cut down all these these uh, rainforests because we want to fucking build pastures and cut up paper and shit. So they're ruining the, the, the rainforest, and they're finding these, like, thousand-year-old civilizations. So anyway, the reason I say that is because they're pretty confident, like, a, a massive disease, like the Spaniards... May have, may have brought over disease. So, you know, again, can that happen again? 100% it could happen again. Is it the Delta variant that is going to take us out? No, I don't think so. But it could be something in, in next year or the year after. So the reason I bring all that up is because, you know, maybe we're meant to evolve into not spending a lot of time with each other. And damn, that sucks, man. It really does. I'm sure it also sucked to start working uh, in New York City paying for three thousand dollars for a studio apartment but we evolved to that right you work in new york city you get paid a lot of money and now you can afford that studio not comfortably you probably hate it but you can we evolved to that we went from you know trading gold and and sheep hair sheep fur is that hair or fur you know <laughs> but we ended up trading that to now hundreds of years later boom here we are so we evolve and we change and we kind of have to we have to accept it. This might be our future. We have to agree on something for once. Jesus, you know, are we going to all get the vaccine? Well, all I could tell you is if you look up the research and the CDC, don't look at fucking news, you know, broadcasts like Fox and CNN. And if you don't trust the CDC, that's the center of disease control. I mean, they have, <laughs> I mean, there's credentials. There's people working there that know a lot more than you do. And I do. So we have to get our information from somewhere. So if you don't believe in them, then what do you believe in? Just, you know, get out of this country because that's our government. So, and trust me, the government's shysty. I'm not a big fan of the government, but who else we got to believe? I picked the CDC over like a CNN or a Fox because at least they don't have a huge agenda. They got an agenda for sure, CDC does, but not as big as CNN or Fox. They're just trying to stay open. The CDC actually... I think more often than not wants to help people and save people. I don't think there's like a, a massive conspiracy theory to take out millions of people because they want to take over the world. Like, what do you, what movie you're watching? So if you look at the CDC, more cases are popping up for people that are non-vaccinated. You know, most of the new cases are from people that are not vaxxed. Again, you don't have to get vaccinated. I'm just saying the science is pretty clear. Your symptoms are going to be worse if you don't have the vaccine. So, like, I have the vaccine. So, if you were, if I was to get COVID, I'll still have symptoms, but they won't be as bad. They probably won't kill me. But if I don't have the vaccine and I get COVID, me personally as a human, me because of the conditions I have, that would kill me probably. <laughs> Same thing with some of my family members. We have to take that into account. You have to be objective and you have to quit being so skeptical 
about every little thing that comes out. Furthermore, I must say, I think you're creating a negative energy. I think we all are if we don't if we don't get on the same page and we don't figure this thing out. And if you don't want to get vaxxed, I think you need to make it very similar to like religion. I've talked about it a couple times where I'm vaccinated and I've talked about it on this podcast. But there's a lot of people out there that maybe talk about it, but um, promote the opposite. See me, I'm telling you, hey, listen, maybe get it, maybe don't, whatever's good for you, your body. For me, the vaccine makes sense. For some of my family members, it makes sense. But there's other people out there that are saying, don't get the vaccine because of this. This is where it gets funky. This is where it's a little wild, where like you as a human being, to tell someone that is just irresponsible. You don't know anything. Like You're not a doctor. Neither am I, which is why I say, I'm doing it for me. You don't have to do it, but just look at the science. Do the research. Don't listen to somebody that isn't doing research and they're just telling you, oh, uh, d- don't get the vaccine because of the microchip. Ugh. Just look at all the positives that that this thing has, has really taught us. You know, it's taught us a lot about who we should be spending time with, I think. Uh, at least for me, it has been. It's taught us what we should be doing. Uh, that there's important things in life, more important things than, I mean, look at where you work. Where do you work uh, if you have a nice job? They're, they care about your health and your well-being. That's what they care about the most. So they've created new opportunities for you or they've done things to make sure you're safe, you and your family are safe. Uh, they've put your interest ahead of their own. For once, most corporations uh, want to make money. Some companies have even sacrificed money. Some companies have even went under business to protect their employees. And, you know, this is why local businesses is so important that we got to protect. But, you know, if you're worth the company that is protecting you, um, I think you need to return the favor. And I think you need to just wait this thing out and be calm and, you know, do the right things. You know, use this time to reflect. Use this time to be positive. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of bad stuff that comes from this. And there's going to be some good stuff too, I think. You know, if you could find the good stuff, and all this, focus on what you want to do. Focus on your passion. That's what I'm trying to do. You know, focus on what I really want to do in my passions. And I also want to focus on, you know, the wife and starting our family and, you know, try not to stress so much and try not to take things so fucking seriously. I'm a pretty, like, fun, easygoing guy anyway. But there is uh, there are some things that I get uh, a, little, a little wicked on and I get a little intense on. So I'm trying to, like, calm that down and not put a lot of pressure on myself. You know, we do that a lot, don't we? We put a lot of pressure on ourselves where we just think to ourselves, oh, because of so-and-so, I need to do this. And because of so-and-so, I need to do that. You know, I was on a podcast recently with a friend of mine. Uh, He was talking about fitness-related topics. And we're just kind of going back and forth talking about uh, the situation of listening to other people work out and what we think about working out. And the the differences are, are astounding. People honestly think that because they watch a TikTok video or a YouTube video that they know a lot about working out. So me and him, we're just kind of going back and forth and laughing at the fact of there's so many people out there that take one idea that they find on the internet and they're so committed to that idea and they think it's so true and factual that they'll like die for it. And that's what we're doing with this pandemic. You're so committed to one specific thing, you're willing to taint everything around you. It's it's gonna it's gonna bring us all down. Now on the flip side of it, devil's advocate, are there some cities and states that are going the complete opposite way? Are they asking for vaccination cards like up in New York? You know, you want to go to a restaurant or a movie theater, you gotta show your vaccination card. So of course if you don't have your vax card or if you didn't get vaccinated, uh, you can't do these things, you can't go to the Statue of Liberty or the you can't do any of that. Is that a little wicked? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a little crazy. I think that's a little nuts, you know, because now we're we're entering a very uh, a very weird fine line of like a dictatorship. What this country is really made of, you know, this country was founded on freedom, right? Like that was the whole idea behind it is to make sure it wasn't like all the other countries. That's why we're the superpower. We're the leader of the free world. But now you're stripping that away from from everybody, and it's going to get people on edge. You know, someone like myself, again, I, I typically vote Republican, but I voted both. This is what a lot of Republicans have been talking shit about the last few years, is they, they're afraid this was going to happen. And 
you know, there's a lot of politicians out there that are wanting this to happen for whatever reason. I'm sure it's all good intentions. You know, listen, I don't think no matter what side of the fence you play on, I don't think one side is trying to take over the other. Like, I don't I don't know if that is like Democrats, for example. I don't know if the whole idea is to have no one bear arms so that way the government can tell us everything and we do this, we do that. I don't believe that until they did this shit with the vaccination card. <laughs> then it's like, because once you do this, okay, what are you going to do it for a couple months and then you're never going to do it again? Come on. Have you ever met a politician? Like every single politician, once they get that taste of blood in the water, they're coming after you then. Like they're going to come straight after you. Once they know that they could do this to us, this is how it starts, man. This is... This is where things get a little wild. And I don't know if it's necessary. I just think we have to figure out a different solution. And that's kind of what I'm talking about here with everything that I'm ranting about is we, we have to think of a better solution to everything, to the vaccination, to how we spend time with each other. You know, we, we, have, to, we have to figure this out in a productive way. And whether you have the vaccine or not, if you get COVID, uh, more often than not, people are, are dying from COVID symptoms, COVID-like symptoms, uh, even if COVID wasn't a thing. But a lot of these things, I think a, st- a study came out, I'm trying to find it, Seventy, I think it's close to 78%, it could be a little less, 70 to 78% of the non-vaccinated people die of COVID because of obesity. What annoys me the most, I think, about CDC and government officials and all that is no one's talking about these are the vitamins that you should be taking to be healthy. This is the body fat percentage you should be at. This is the body mass index you should. Hey, guys and gals, go for a five-minute walk every single day. Um, hey, guys and gals, you know, go ride a bike for 10 minutes a day. Like what? I mean, wherever you live, you could do something. You don't have to get crazy. You don't have to build a gym in your garage. You don't even have to go to a gym. You just have to get outside. You have to walk around. You have to be active. And no one's talking about that at all. I mean, there's a lot of people that talk about it. I mean, you know, Joe Rogan's a big proponent of it. Um, Ten Kennedy talks a lot about it. Funny enough, I mean, people that are fit talk about this a lot. But the people that are unhealthy, primarily in in politics, they're not talking a lot, or excuse me, they're not talking at all about how to come back COVID and not get COVID. The answer is not throw on a mask, get a vaccine, and stay inside. That's not the answer because... Yeah, you might stop it temporarily, sure. But then the next thing you know, you open up the floodgates like we did, and then there's going to be this new variant. There's always going to be a virus. If it's not the Delta variant, it's going to be, you know, the Frontier variant or, you know, the Southwest variant. I'm just kidding. They're not, like, named after airlines. But, (laughs) you know, there's always going to be something out there that kills us, like a virus. There always has been. For hundreds of years, almost every single virus, except for the big boys, the killers, almost every single virus can be prevented, not cured or stopped, but prevented to not get it by living a healthier lifestyle, including the main killer, which is the just the flu, influenza virus. What you and I have gotten numerous times. A lot of us are, you know, get that shot every year. But even if you don't get the shot, because typically you're eating a little bit more healthier, you most likely won't get symptoms. But if you're obese, um, if you have type 2 diabetes or underlying conditions, if there's anything like that and you get the flu, a really bad case of the flu and your immune system drops, your body can't recover, you could die from the flu. People die from the flu every year still to the day. But if you take care of yourself and you take care of your body and your mind, none of this will hurt you. Sure, you could still die. I mean, there, there's cases of of people that are healthier that die from COVID and die from the flu and all that, but you're going to lower your chances. I, I've I've only surfed a few times in my life, but I can almost guarantee to you that I'll never be bitten by a shark. Do you know why? Because I don't go in the fucking water and surf. That's why. Because I don't go scuba diving with sharks. That's why. So I'm lowering my chances drastically, almost to zero. So I will never get bit by a shark. Now, sharks don't typically... They bite people and let them go. I'm not saying sharks kill people. I'm saying bitten. A lot of surfers get bit by sharks. Not a lot of surfers die from sharks. There's only like five deaths. So I'm a big shark guy. My friends call me shark. Like it's one of my favorite 
species on this planet. Uh, so I'm not hating on sharks, FYI. <laughs> PETA out there, take it easy. I'm, I'm just bringing that up because <laughs> I just I love sharks and I respect them, but I'm never going to get in the water with them. I'm terrified of them. Terrified. But I'm never going to get bit by one because I don't go in the water. Are you someone that gets the vaccine? Okay. If you don't, you're not doing everything you can to lower your chances of COVID. That's just a fact. And that's with any vaccine. Are you overweight? Are you unhealthy? Do you spend a lot of time outdoors sweating and kissing on strangers? You're most likely increasing your chances of getting COVID. Interesting. If you don't surround yourself with one particular thing, you won't get that one particular thing. It's like with everything, man. What are you consuming every day? Are you consuming like positivity on your social media? Are you consuming funny stuff that gets you laughing? Is it things that maybe make you better and healthier and increase your well-being and make your life better for you and your family? Or are you consuming a lot of CNN and Fox bullshit that is just a bunch of people that you're never going to meet and you're listening to these people as if they are the Messiah? I was having a conversation with a friend the other day and she goes, can you believe? She doesn't talk like that. She's like, can you believe that this fucking, these cases, show me these cases. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, they're saying this Delta variant's so dangerous. They're starting the mask mandates. They're doing that. I was like, just look them up. Go to the CDC. Uh, no, fuck the CDC. I go, okay. What do you watch? Fox News. Oh, okay. <laughs> but what's funny is like, <laughs> I just love the fact, and look, I <laughs> keep in mind, I'm a Republican. I watch Fox News, but guess what? I also watch CNN. Do you know why? Because if you're watching only Fox News and you're saying, those motherfuckers at CNN are making up a bunch of bullshit. How the fuck do you know you're only watching Fox News? So what? Fox News, it's 100%. That's all they do is speak the truth. The people that watch CNN are saying the same thing about Fox. Like, what are you doing? What is going through your head that you're so egotistical that you think that one side is correct? They're both stupid. They're both wrong. They're both not making any sense. They both don't know you. They don't care about you. They just want headlines. Stop watching the news. Stop watching shit that's going back and forth. But it's those stupid shows where it's one dude hosting it, and there's three, there, there's a whole panel of people, and they're arguing back and forth, and back and forth, back. And I'm just like, giving me a headache. I'm like, is this how we're having conversations now? What are we doing? That's a big reason why I started the podcast is to give people a platform to speak one-on-one -on -one and to talk to people and get to learn more. The fact that you're just relying on a company whether it's a news station or an article or a paper, man, we need to chill out. Your environment is toxic, man. You know, there's a really cool, and I'm going to leave it at this because this rant is long enough, I think, but there's this really cool, it's old, but it's called the Rat Park, originally done in the 70s. Uh, you could look it up. It's, it's called Rat Park. It's very, uh, very famous. But there's a, a lot of experiments and uh, I'm going to give you the cliff notes here, but it, it, they mainly wanted to figure out the addiction of cocaine and heroin. Fun topic. But they wanted to figure out the, the addiction to those drugs back in the 70s and how severe they are. Of course, how do we do this? Well, we experiment on animals. I guess it's better than experimenting on humans, but, you know, either way, to each his own. So in, in a rat park, the rats uh, could actually drink fluid from one of two drop dispensers, right? So there's these little cages that they're in. This is back in the 70s. There's little cages that they're in, very small cages. Uh, I don't know the exact dimensions. You'll have to look it up. But very tiny cages, one rat's in them, and then they'll have two dispensers. Now, each one will automatically record what they drink. One dispenser contains sweetened morphine solution, which essentially is like heroin. Um, and the other one is just plain water. So the morphine solution was sweetened to reduce, you know, adverse react, uh, adverse reactions to, to actually taste the uh, morphine as like a control. Prior to morphine introduction, uh, rats were offered like a sweetened solution instead. But I guess this worked a little bit better, sweetened the morphine. But this guy, uh, Bruce K. Uh, Alexander, did this over at uh, Simon Fraser University in British Columbia. So you can look it up. It's in Canada. 
And turns out these rats got super addicted, not surprisingly, uh, because it's, you know, morphine. Of course, they're going to be hooked, right? Uh, as you can imagine, there were some interesting side effects. Uh, they concluded that the isolated cages, uh, as well as female sex, caused an increased consumption of the morphine. Morphine. The author advised that it's important to consider the uh, the conditions of the cages as well as the sex of the animals when exploring self-administered uh, morphine. He writes that they did show some signs of uh, dependence, obviously, off this. Uh, there were some minor withdrawal sightings, twitching. So, again, you, you could look that up. But the reason I bring that up is because the follow-up experiment uh, was even more interesting. Years later, uh, studies did a follow-up experiment that did essentially the same thing, where they grabbed rats and they uh, had water bottles, again, measuring each one. One had water, uh, one had uh, heroin and or cocaine, uh, which essentially is kind of like morphine, but you know they, they made it much more stronger. But instead of cages, they uh, enrich their environment drastically. And they actually had, you know, uh, rat wheels and, and, uh, and, and mountaintops, you know, like not real mountains, obviously they're rat-sized mountains, but like grass. And, you know, it was like a big environment, right? It was a bunch of rats. And turns out, long story short, again, look this up, it's really interesting. There's even a book on it. But long story short, the rats did not choose the heroin and cocaine laced water. They didn't. And if they did, they didn't go to it as often because they had other shit to do. Now, some could say that, well, they were doing other shit because they were all hopped up on coke. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but the idea and the whole point of this, this study that's super interesting, it's all about the environment. It's not about what we're getting fed. So, you know, here is kind of think of it like us as humans. What are we getting fed? What is the heroin cocaine that, that we're getting fed on a daily basis? Like, think about that for a second. What are we getting fed? Now it's addicting. It's addicting to listen to the stuff and to watch, you know, these news articles and, and listen to these people yell and scream on TV, right? It's cool to be part of Team Blue and Team Red and, you know, Team Trump and Team Biden. It's fun to be part of that. I get it. Whatever. I'm not big into that because I got more important shit to do, but I get it. Whatever you're into. That said, that's what you're addicted to. Your phone, your whatever you're watching. What's your environment like, though? Are you the rat in the cage only consuming that or are you consuming other stuff in your environment? Is, you, is your environment enriched to where you're not getting fully fucked up on this drug and this addiction? If your answer is, oh shit, I might be in the cage, then you got a problem. You got to change, you got to change your habits. You got to change what you're doing because it's not healthy. It's not healthy for a lot of reasons, but you know, it's mainly not healthy, healthy uh, mentally. You know, forget about physically, because obviously we talked about the physicality aspect of this, where obviously it could increase your chances of not just getting uh, COVID, but, you know, longevity of life, all types of, of things that I talk about on this podcast. But I think the big thing is just mentally, you know, mentally, if you're negative and if you're consuming negative content, your environment is negative, then you're going to bring down a lot of people around you. And is that what we want to do? Each human, have we, we're so intelligent right now. Like, we evolved from chimps. Like, we're so fucking smart. Have we come down to 2021? Almost we're in 2022 now. Technically, 2022 years later, depending on what religious belief you believe in. But 2,000 years we have mastered humanity, and the best we could do is this. The best we could do is, is surround ourselves with negative people and talk shit about people online and like your friend voted a Republican, so you're, he's a prick. Like you're going to talk shit about him. Your friend's a Democrat, so he's an asshole. Like you're going to talk shit about him. Like is this what we've evolved to? Is this the best we could do? This is madness. Why do we not have more an optimis optimistic view on everything? You know, lately I've been really thinking about that, whether it's with work or my personal life. Like I've really been trying to like immerse myself into just this like, I only care about a few things, and I need to stop worrying about all the other crazy stuff out there because jobs come and go, people come and go, family even comes and goes. And the one thing we could do is protect our sanity. And I think it's okay to be a little bit selfish. I think it's okay to care about numero uno every now and again. I think it's important to focus on your health. I think it's important to focus on your, your mental 
ability and to strengthen your brain and to evolve yourself. Because everything around you is going to change constantly. And so are you. But you don't have control over the stuff around you. You only have control over yourself. So why are you worried about what everyone else is doing when you can't control that? Even my wife, I can't control her. She's her own person. She's a human. I'm going to tell her to do one thing, but she's probably going to do the other. That's whatever. She's going to do what she's going to do. I can't allow myself to be upset about that because I can't control that. I can only control how I react to things. And that's what we have to get better at as humans. With this new Delta variant, with the next one that's going to come up, we have to be better at reacting to things. You cannot be so matter-of-fact with stuff. I'm not. I try not to be. My favorite word in the English dictionary is maybe. I even created a t-shirt. Shameless plug. It's on thebrother.com slash shop. Link in the bio. But it's, it's my favorite word, maybe. Like even ask my wife. She hates it. But that's my favorite word. It always has been for years now. If anything goes down, she's like, hey, uh, this about work, this about work. Like, what do you think? And I go, I don't know, maybe. She hates it. But I don't know everything. Neither do you. Neither do the guys at Fox or CNN. Neither does fucking Fauci. No one knows anything. We're all just put on this earth. And we came out of a womb. And we don't know what the fuck we're doing. We're just all trying to figure it out. People are going to make mistakes. You're not going to like some people. You're going to love some other people. Quit judging everybody with a fine tooth comb. Don't worry about them. Just worry about you. You worry about you. And everyone else worries about themselves. And we're all just kind to each other. Man, this world is going to be awesome. That's what I know is tough to hear. It's a funky time. Just take care of yourself. Take care of your body. That's all you could do. Depending on what city or state you live in, things are going to change. It is what it is. Let's get past this. Let's get through this together. Let's stay positive. And of course, if you haven't already, another shameless plug, subscribe to the podcast. More rants like this. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll probably have people on. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I got a lot of couple guests coming up. Hope you guys check it out. Until next time, thanks for tuning in to the Barota Podcast. Love you guys. Be safe out there. Peace.